afternoon, everybody. Since the Black Lives Matter movement um, in the summer, we in Bath have decided we really need a conversation about um, the, our race relationships that we have in the city, how we can improve them and how we can make, give people a voice um, that have grown up uh, um, in, in our minority communities and how, what that feels like. Today, I'm meeting with Inya Miles. Inya is a student, but she grew up in Bath. It's great to see you again, Inya. We've had a conversation before. Um, and thank you for um, um, volunteering to be on uh, our conversation today. Let me just first ask you a little bit about yourself. What was it like to grow up in Bath? So it was it was a bit of a strange one, I guess, because I think I had probably a little bit of a different experience to some other people because like my mum is white and then I just live with her. And so there was kind of like this added sort of layer of like, oh, is that your mum and sort of stuff like that. But um, I think it has been kind of like overwhelmingly positive. But I think my sort of general experience is perhaps people just not being quite as educated on sort of like smaller things because people generally know not to be really overtly racist but I, I've experienced sort of microaggressions here and there but I think as experiences go I'm quite fortunate. I think you're touching on a very important point here that of course we all know that racism is wrong uh, and yet it persists in a more subtle way uh, and that is where it becomes, um, you know, quite stubborn um, and difficult to shift. And I think that is basically where we are in Bath as well with our conversation. Yes, definitely. And I think actually it's the smaller things that affect people more. I remember my teachers in school would always say like, when you're doing your revision, you want to do little and often, and that's how it's going to stick with you. And that's kind of what I felt with sort of like microaggressions and sort of smaller bits of racism is that it's like little and often, but it kind of sticks with you more than when someone randomly does something sort of really overt and awful. So this month is Black History Month. What do you think that could make you know how could how that could make a difference is it um, really going to make a difference we've had it for some years is it just tokenism should we do something else or do you think it's actually that little and often that you've just described uh, the right way forward so i believe in it kind of being black history month every month um that's that's always been something that I've really thought because I think there does need to be a wider sort of change but while we do have Black History Month it needs to be something that every sort of institution participates in um whether that be schools art galleries museums businesses um whatever have you I just think it's so important that people are educated on Black history and because I think so often we're taught that you know, black history isn't a prosperous one. And that's just not the truth. Um, because in, in school anyway, I was only taught about sort of the slave trade and stuff. And that that was the extent of it. I never learned about anything that was positive, I guess it was all about struggle. And, and are you saying, am I hearing this correctly, that, you know, just having one month where everybody's talking about big black history and then 11 months when we don't talk about it is maybe a wrong way of going about it? And, and would you be saying, um, let's just bring it into any of the history lessons that we have? Um, yes, it's important to highlight uh, that our history has been very imbalanced um, and, and therefore maybe keep a month where we talk more about it. But really what we need to do is understand that uh, we need to change something in the way we, te we teach history. Yes, yeah. So there does need to be sort of an overhaul, if you like, of the current education system and the way that we're teaching that and the content in that. I think I'd always want to keep Black History Month just as sort of an acknowledgement of the fact that for so long we haven't had any Black history properly within the curriculum. But yeah I do want um, a so-called black curriculum I guess. Yeah so what you're saying is keep black history month until we are there and we have a full, fully inclusive um, history. Um, just the last one 
could you give me an example of where you think you know history could be told differently with the aspect um, of Black Lives Matter much more, or Black Lives or Black History much more integrated? So I suppose we have to kind of start off with the recognition that you know Black History didn't sort of start with slavery and then end at Martin Luther King Jr. Um, and it's it's just learning about Black people within sort of everyday bits and bobs you know we don't talk about black philosophers or black mathematicians or you know just the people that really did make a difference and I'm not saying that we no longer have any history about white people I'm just we need to integrate it in there because I so I was really fortunate in that one of my A-level history teachers she always sort of managed to get in a bit of black history just within the bits and bobs that we were learning in the regular curriculum and it was sort of a shame because it wasn't necessarily relevant to my exam but she just knew that it was really really important and I think it could just change so many people's perspectives on stuff because how on earth are you supposed to sort of change your mind about things if you don't have any education on it. Thank you I, I think that it is just such a wonderful insight from your point of view as a young person and, and the positive message that I'm trying to put out there as well. It doesn't mean that you wipe something out, you just include and it grows wider and, 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 and bigger and more interesting and more colorful. Thank you, India, that was great, thank you. Thank you.